Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today, we have a, another channel first for you. Uh, we'll be reviewing a watch from Raymond Weil, which uh, a little bit about the brand. They're a Swiss-made brand that was founded not too long ago, back in 1976. They are an independent mid-tier brand, uh, which is actually still family-owned and operated, currently being headed by Raymond Weil's son-in-law. So, you know, that's something that's definitely interesting to find within that kind of Swiss-made mid-tier range because a lot of brands are pretty much just uh, fall all underneath uh, the Swatch Group. So it's nice to find brands that are still, you know, an original brand, family-owned brand, not something that's basically a brand or revival of something that was famous in the past that was basically passed on or bought out. So um, a little bit about this type of watch, as you can tell, it is a dive watch, uh, some key common characteristics and uh, common design language you're going to look for in a dive watch. You want something that's of course water resistant, normally through a screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible, uh, with a dive time bezel and a uh, diver extension if on bracelet. Now, this particular model is, um, is definitely new to the streets. I don't think there's been any reviews for it. This is the Freelancer Automatic Diver. Um, in particular, it does have a date and this is in blue. So let's go ahead and zoom out and take a closer look and get this in hand. All right. So as you can see, really beautiful uh, blue tone here. Uh, you know, I think the camera uh, and then the lighting, of course, uh, is making it look probably a little bit brighter than it is truly in real life. I'd say it's probably a shade darker than the Oris blue, um, probably closer to the blue you'd find on the Seamaster uh, Professional, which is definitely a tone that I like and something that you don't see every day, especially with a ceramic bezel insert. So as far as specs go, um, this is a 42 and a half millimeter uh, diameter watch with a, a uh, 11.8 millimeter height, so just under 12 millimeters. Um, it is uh, stainless steel with brushed and polished finishes, as you can see. Um, the crystal is a flat sapphire with a, uh, AR coating on the inner and outer uh, portions there, so it definitely does. As you can see, the light, uh, the studio lights, when it reflects off of it, I think you can kind of tell. There's just a little extra care, and this is actually the first time I think we reviewed on the channel a watch that had both inner and outer AR coating. I gotta say, um, I'm actually really impressed. Uh, I think the dial itself, definitely, uh, when you look at it, you can see through it much easier, especially when there's not a lot of glare, um, but this definitely does help reduce glare when you're outside and, and whatnot. And here, in this case, you know, of course, uh, under the studio lights. Um, the price for these, uh, the retail is actually $19.50 and you can find them kind of a street price for anywhere in between $1,200 to $1,500 and you know personally I think they're worth every penny. I think even at retail there's probably a case to be made because these just, um, I've just been so pleasantly surprised with the build quality and kind of features and just really a great cohesive design here. So um, let's get into some more specs. The bezel is a unidirectional rotating bezel. 120 clicks, even with the gloves here, pretty easy to grip, nice solid clicks, not a lot of play really. So I mean, I'm probably not the, the most amazing or new age. Um, you know, bezel action, but it's definitely not bad. <laughs> I've definitely um, had some uh, watches that were more expensive, um, even uh, that that didn't uh, feel that good in hand. So definitely big uh, plus on that standpoint. Now, of course, you can see that it does have a really nicely done ceramic insert. The crown is screwed down, and it has basically kind of matching. Um, matching kind of gear tooth um, grip there on it and I gotta say that the the grip is definitely not you know super tooly feeling um, or sharp it, it definitely is a more of a softer look and and a feel to it uh, but 
it's definitely executed really finely. I think it's more of a design choice than uh, necessarily, um, you know, some type of manufacturing, um, you know, kind of uh, softness. I think they actually designed it to to be like that. And I think that actually suits the uh, theme uh, as it is more of a dressy diver and, and less of a, you know, hardcore tool watch. So the movement inside, uh, you can't see it, but um, it has a really nice case back uh, covering. It's uh, brushed and polished. Nothing special as far as deep engravings or stamps or anything like that, but it does house um, Raymond Wiles uh, RW4200 movement, which is basically, um, it ends up either being a Sleeta SW200 or an ETA2824, whatever they can find. Essentially, I've seen pictures of this movement with an ETA, um, and then, you know, it'll have, our, you know, say 25 joules, sometimes I see it with 26, so then I know that it's the Salita. I'm going to go ahead and say this one's probably the Salita, um, because uh, pretty much the majority of the uh, Raymond Wiles with see-through case backs that have this movement that I've seen, uh, I'd probably say 9 out of 10 that I've seen have been Salitas, so, um, but you never know, it, it could have an ETA in there just because they have become more available as of late. But I'm just going to say Salita SW200 um, because that is kind of my educated guess. Now, as far as the dial goes, it is a nice dark blue gloss dial. Um, as you can see, really, really cool. Let me actually hit one of these lights here so you can kind of maybe get a clear idea as far as the way this blue plays. It definitely... It's on the darker side, and I think, of course, when it's extremely well lit like this, it's gonna show up and, and be, it's gonna be the brighter side of what you're gonna expect from this watch, you know, really bright uh, sunshine, you're gonna see it looking like this, but in most cases, it's definitely gonna appear a bit darker, which I think is a good thing. Um, now, it also does have applied indices, as you can see, and it has a date complication at the four o'clock, which can be a bit divisive. I know not everybody's a fan of kind of that preview window die, uh, date complication, especially at the four o'clock. I think actually with the preview window there, the date at four o'clock um, actually looks a little bit more symmetrical than if they would have just done the single date cut out uh, without it. And they put it at the four, of course, it would have been nice to have it at the six or you know at the uh, three o'clock, but I think it's one of the things that kind of adds to the style of the watch and it definitely speaks to Raymond Wiles uh, design language especially within the freelancer range uh, which is something you're going to see on a couple other models so to me it made sense for them to kind of stay with their um, you know their brand styling and kind of keep everything cohesive across uh, this line to have it with that date uh, preview and I think with the preview it actually does add a little bit of balance to the dial um, and I do like that so you know, it's probably, if I was designing a watch, it would be my first choice, but I think on here, it definitely works. As you can see, uh, it is water resistant to 300 meters, which is definitely very nice and, and to be expected in this price range. Um, it uses BW9 uh, Swiss Super Luminova, which is gonna have that nice blue tone hue glow. Um, I believe the black variant uh, actually uses C1 though. Um, so I, I don't, I've handled that piece. Uh, I don't own it. I didn't get to shine it or take it into the dark or anything like that. So I can't say for sure, but from what I've seen, uh, I believe it actually glows green. Uh, and then this one of course does glow blue. So something to think about if you are interested in the black modeled variant. Now the lugs are a 22 millimeter lug width and the bracelet beautifully tapers down. Of course, everything is solid, solid end links, solid links, screw in connectors, um, and then it comes down to this wonderful clasp. And I think for me, this is definitely a very big selling point for the watch. As you can see, really nicely done and integrated, designed out, push button deployment there, and then you do have a very solid diver's extension. And so, you know, I think the style is definitely very reminiscent of the um, Seamaster Professional um, from Omega, but I think that, you know, the way that they actually integrated the style of the Jubilee um, into it there, and then also the way that they did the branding, the, the RW from Raymond Wilde, I think it actually looks really, really great and really nicely executed and just kind of the way these links here um, connect, I, I think it's really just beautifully done. And because 
These are relatively short links. They actually don't have any micro adjustments or um, uh, half links uh, because half of a Jubilee link would be, would be pretty small. So I actually do find that it does have a nice fit. And generally with Jubilees, one of the nice things is they're so comfortable, you can wear them probably a little bit tighter than you'd like. And also, um, I don't mind them being that loose because of uh, the motion on wrist. Uh, Jubilee bracelet is actually it's one of the nice things. It doesn't have to be perfectly dialed in. You can wear it a little bit snug on the wrist and it's still comfortable enough because of the articulation. And um, it's still, because also because of that articulation, it doesn't clunk around on the wrist if you're wearing it a little bit looser. For me and my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it actually fits really nice. So let's go ahead and get it on wrist and uh, go from there. Okay, so as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it wears just beautifully. Uh, it definitely wears a little bit closer, I'd say personally to a 41 uh, versus, you know, the fact that it is a 42 and a half, which would be really almost closer to 43. Um, I think just because of the case shape and the beautiful taper on the bracelet, um, <clears throat> To me, it definitely feels uh, more like a 41 and wears more like a 41. And also with that low uh, 12 millimeter thickness, of course, it's not the thinnest watch in the world, but you know, as a dive watch, I think that is actually quite thin. So really Im impressive, um, especially 300 meters water resistant and you know, just the beautiful cohesive design. It definitely is bulked up. They could have, um, you know, this isn't some super slim uh, diver by any means, um, but it's definitely um, not super bulky. I think it's actually right, you know, right there, kind of perfectly proportioned um, for just kind of a modern dive watch and definitely has some great vintage aesthetic cues there, of course. Jubilee bracelet's not something you see every day, especially finished uh, to this quality, which is really, really nice. So on the wrist, you know, it's very, very comfortable and it lays so very flat on the wrist and you know it really is thinner than you think um it's just really really nicely done and i gotta say it's just infinitely comfortable especially with that nice taper down to 18 millimeters on the bracelet and clasp and as you can see the the, the way that it that it um, integrates the clasp into the end of the bracelet there is just seamless. Um, so a lot of times you might see, you know, an 18 millimeter taper, but the clasp itself will be 20 millimeters. That's definitely not the case here. It uh, tapers down and it just, you know, everything just flows very cohesively and that pays off. So you get um, some nice design um, functionality there as well as stylistically, I think it just looks really, really handsome. So, you know, I guess some points I'd say is that this piece is definitely, I'd say, more versatile than some of the other Swiss contemporaries that are in this range. I mean, if you think about the Oris Aquis uh, or like, the, you know, the Rad, R, the Rad OD Star 200, you know, it does use proprietary lugs versus, you know, kind of this where we have the traditional, which is nice. So if you want to switch down different straps, a dive strap, a NATO, it definitely has something you can do here. Um, and then also, let's say versus something like a Longines Hydro Conquest or a Certina DS Action Diver, this is going to have the 22 millimeter lugs versus the kind of odd size 21 millimeter lug width. So I think that's um, something definitely taken consideration uh, for this piece. So you know, out of kind of the competition that's out there in this range, it does offer. Um, I'd say a more versatile package. It definitely um, can be dressed up and down uh, just because of one, the quality of finishing and also I think the design language um, is very casual but at the same time can be dressed up. Now as far as model variants go, there are quite a few different ones. Um, you know, there's blacked out cases. Um, you know, you can get it on a rubber strap, you can get it in black. The black model has a black date disc, which is really nice. So if you actually are turned off by the uh, white date disc here and kind of think it's a bit of an eyesore, the black model, I'd say the date is definitely much less intrusive to the dial. Um, so that's something to think about. There's also a silver dial model um, with a uh, blue ceramic insert. And then the ceramic insert actually has more of a silver uh, uh, fill on the indices that are painted on there and the markings um, so that's definitely uh, something different uh, it looks really cool too uh, I'd say probably ties a little bit more into kind of that vintage aesthetic um, with the uh, you know two-tone uh, feel with the uh, silver dial uh, very bright and then the uh, the blue uh, insert so 
As far as comparable models go, I mean, of course there's a ton out there, I'd say probably in this price range and kind of um, specs wise, some that would be pretty comparable would be something like maybe like a Turby Lawless. Um, you know, I haven't handled one of those in person, but from what I've seen, I'm very impressed. I'd say they probably are pretty close in dimensions. Um, except, you know, the Turby is German made. It's, it's more of a boutique watch. Um, but, you know, from what I've seen, they're very interesting and I would love to eventually uh, get one on the channel or on the other side of, you know, uh, of the spectrum, something would probably be pretty comparable would probably be something like the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer, which I think definitely, of course, is going to have more uh, brand cachet, um, both good and bad, um, some different baggage that goes with uh, owning a Tag Heuer. Um, and I think that, you know, as far as name recognition, Raymond Weil, um, uh, you know, for those that are not really into watches, will actually probably recognize the brand um, because it is a very, I guess, quote unquote, fashionable, fashionable brand um, from that perspective. So, you know, I say bottom line, this piece is really a true contender to, you know, uh, probably one of my number one videos that I've ever filmed for the channel, which was the ultimate affordable blue Swiss auto diver um, showdown. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring those out uh, really quick here. Um, and, you know, take a look. And I mean, really, I think this is just extremely competitive um, uh, across the range here. These are all great pieces. Um, of course, Christopher Ward is just a real spec beast um, with, uh, the, you know, the extra water rating and everything and the price. Um, but, you know, also they, they haven't been around as long as Raymond Weil. Um, so that's something to think about. Also, it's a much thicker watch. Um, you know, the Sertina de Saxon Diver, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a, I, you know, it, it is definitely a lot cheaper, but it's definitely um, lower class as far as the finishing goes. The Longines, I think, is very comparable, um, but it def doesn't have those modern updates um, that you'll see here on the Raymond Weil. Um, the Oris, beautiful, love it. Um, but it definitely, I'd say, is probably less versatile with those um, lugs and then also the style is definitely less dressy. It's more tool uh, oriented. I'd say the ra the Rado. I mean, that's probably one of the best um, dress divers you can get um, on the market today, and it probably feels the most luxurious um, on wrist uh, out of these. But I think that you, again, you're getting something that's just a little bit more versatile. You know, you can kind of almost replace these two watches um, with this one because it definitely feels on the dressier um, side, but also can be dressed down. Um, but before we get too far into that, which will be pending another video, let's go ahead and get a loom shot here of this guy. So we'll go ahead and zoom in. Not too far in. There you go. Charge this up here a little bit so you can see what the loom looks like. So as you can see, really beautifully done BGW9 loom, I'd say really, really nice. I mean, it's nothing crazy. Um, I'll definitely be able to compare it to the Oris in that upcoming kind of uh, follow-up dual video, but um, I think it's really nicely done. So let's go ahead and get it in a low light transition here. As you can see in the low light, really nice, really beautifully done. Just the design, it just really catches the light there so nicely. As you can see that blue, <laughs> Now, of course, in the low light, it's not as bright. It definitely is verging on looking almost black. So really just a beautiful piece that I've been very surprised with, very happy with. Um, let's go ahead and hit the lights there. As you can see, it looks a lot brighter as the camera adjusts. But let me hit this light on this side and uh, you can kind of get a better idea, as you can see there. Um, it looks like a little bit of a darker tone with just a little bit of less light on it. So indoors and, and whatnot and probably day-to-day -day use, it's going to look a little bit closer to this tone. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and cut that back on. So, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I got to say, I've been really impressed with this piece. Um, and, you know, really from a brand that I didn't have too much interest in. So, I think Raymond Weil, um, big thumbs up on that. You guys drew me in. I'm a big fan now of the build quality and finish. This Jubilee bracelet is quite excellent. So, it actually did inspire me even to pick up another Raymond Weil. Uh, which is this nice little number right here, a little 38 millimeter kind of everyday dress watch. Um, and I think it's pretty great. So I guess we can close the video on that. So look forward uh, to the review for this coming up here. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the review for this piece. I think it's definitely uh, worth your time. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, please hit like if you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.